Divine Truth Documentary Jesus, Mary and Others provide information to people or organizations that produce documentaries. In this video, Thomas Lita, cameraman Simon and others are having a discussion over dinner at Jesus and Mary's home. Filmed on the 12th of August 2013 in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. This is part one. Yeah. 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 Just yell, Dave, and you need help. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. The top two, the top two. Probably the most popular house in a long time. Yeah. Nice. It's lovely to have you guys here. Last time we had six people must have been about a year ago, maybe. Easily. It was when you got, were you guys here when we had 30 or so people here just squeezed in? I think mum might have been here, maybe. I don't know. We had 30 or so people squeezed in trying to. There was a lot. That's right. Yeah. There was no table in there. That's right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> which, which is it? Oh, yeah. Guys, have tried this. It's so yummy. Oh, this is this what um, they yeah. made? Yeah. yeah. Time too, I think, huh? Yes. Time that is it 5.45? 5.46? Look, 5.45. Next one? Next one? I'll get it. Yeah, it's 5.48. Yeah, that's fine. They, they came in about 5.45, 5.46 yesterday. The Gurgi. Mm. They're sulfur crusted coffee too. And they're white. They're white. With a, with a yellow crust. Yeah. And they're made it red. Every time they go to bed, every time they go to bed. Oh, do they? Yeah. <laughs> It's like one of them makes that much. What time do they wake up? Like sunrise? About six, just mm. at 6 mm. And they're just as loud. Yeah. Mm. Lovely. I was yeah. filming in the, um, in the Amazon and we were sleeping right in the, right in the jungle. It was great. And we um, just got all those huge jungle sounds. Like, yeah. Right. So you would have got more doors and everything. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Do the two cans and that make much noise? Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Bell it out. Yeah. It's amazing. And you just you can't even you sleep. Sleep. Yeah, initially. Just like, yeah, sometimes it's in the sleep. morning here and then at the night here. You can't hear any you can't hear anything mm. Yeah. Especially in the summer because they all come like yeah. they all come for drink and they're thirsty in the summer. So yeah. Yeah. dusk so it always comes to the last Friday morning for us is just insane. Mm. Because <laughs> <laughs> you guys are used to sleeping in silence mm -hmm. too, and you don't yeah. hear all yeah. that. Yeah. Of course, things. I was talking this morning, like, was it was Thursday or whatever? Friday. Friday. About koala bears. And Corny did this classic noise of what a koala bear. You have to ask him. Like, oh, <laughs> 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 you don't feel the description. So, yeah. So, I'm just going to sleep, and then. Then this noise goes from the list area. Oh, beauty! Get in there! Hey, Tommy, you want some to have, didn't you? Hey, I'm not coming now. I'm done. I need to turn that thing off. Oh, yeah. Press the button, but I didn't know what happened. No, yes, we're right. Not quite as if we just pressed on the button. This was cooked outside, wasn't it? Yeah, we were outside, yeah. Not inside. It gets too hot for summertime with an oven inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And usually, if it's really cold, then we fire this fire up here that's behind me. And that's guys, it. Guys, it's got an oven in the bottom, it's a tissue, and it's got yeah, a hot place awesome. on top, so... Yeah. Does anyone else want, like, a tissue? So we get... Thank you. Oh, 
with the tomato on it and some spices and everything else on it, and then have the oven right after you get it out of the oven. And then just everything else. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's all, it's all experimental. Mm -hmm. Miramax is really nice food, right? It's got these mushroom foods. <laughs> 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 it's like a great invention, just mushrooms on a burger, like. So well, we sometimes we do that, like a big portobello. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we do big portobello. Yeah. But I have a um, good recipe for one with lentil and wild mushrooms. Yeah. 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 And you blend it together. And there's really nice breads that are like. And you make like these uh, cashews kind of cheese, cream cheese to have on your That's a really tasty. Yeah, I think it's yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like have greens and avo and tomato and then your burger. Yeah. And then whatever else. I always have sprouts and the cheesy. No, that's what's in it. Yeah. It's open. Thanks, mate. <laughs> Do you guys ever get the states? You got so like Simon and Thomas? Yeah. Occasionally. Mm. Have you ever gone to a there's a chain over there called PF Chains? Have you ever heard of them? No. Mm -hmm. I'd recommend them, mate. Yeah. Good food, really good food. What, what, what type of cuisine is it? It's mostly sort of Thai, Asian. Mm. My favourite. It's really nice. Yeah, I love that Thai. Every time we go there, we basically try to book our accommodation. Google the restaurant first. Yeah. <laughs> and for about 10 bucks each, you get a really good meal. Yeah. 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 As you can in the States, in most places. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to Thailand in New Year's. Um, oh, okay. Two and a half weeks. Yeah. We, we got engaged in Thailand by a couple of other so we're going back there. Oh, man. Yeah. You can just get the seafood. <laughs> the seafood, you know, tiger prawns. Yeah. So I remember when we first, <laughs> first saw them. And he was like, oh, yes. Select what you'd like for your seafood barbecue or whatever. You want some prawns and stuff. And I was like, oh, what about the, what about the lobster? Because um, there were these... They were actually tiger prawns, but they were that big. Huge. Yeah, huge. Yeah. 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 And you called it the lobster. Yeah, so now it's the lobster. Yeah. So you go, no, no, no. And then he calls that a lobster. Yeah, this is a lobster. <laughs> That's no knife, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, man, I can't wait to. Yeah. We just checked the 44 gallons of drum. Great form, I didn't even see there. Mm. Ko, Ko Chang, so sort of down near Cambodia, mm. just just a, so yeah, the east of Thailand. Um, yeah, it's nice. It's a bit less. It's a bit less of the touristy yeah, yeah. ones, which are a bit further south. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the Thais though, they they go there for their holidays. Yeah. Right. So it's no, a bit more around. Nice. Yeah. 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 yeah, but yeah, a bit over run. I think these days. It is beautiful. Australians. <laughs> <laughs> That's Bali, isn't it? <laughs> Drunk Australians. Yeah. 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 If you talk to um, Maxine, AJ's mum, she's like, oh. <laughs> Drunk Australians. I said to mum. They get killed. They get killed. Because <laughs> <laughs> we've we've got some friends in Bali who've wanted to come for some time. They have a school so there. The school like in Auckland and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And. Um, yeah. We were going to go this year. Mm. Don't ever get. I said, Mum, have you ever been to Bali? <laughs> <laughs> I saw it on TV. People in I saw it on TV. What did you say? Like five Australians <laughs> die there a week or something. Yeah, judging from what you've heard about us on TV. Salad guys, I'm being quiet, waiting for me and 
Yeah, you have to make the break. No, is it is that um, dressed already? It's all dressed. Yeah, it's dressed. I don't know about Paula Bell. Paula Bell's dressed. We didn't bring a dress in because yeah. we're in a cabin, so I just bought lemon wedges. So sure. Um, AJ makes a good dressing. I might put it all in the bowl. Yeah, do it. Come on. Because it's probably easier. Yeah, that's easier. Yeah, that's easier. Yeah, that's easier. Yeah, that's easier. I can't quite get my tongue. Yeah, that's going to be wrong. I don't have one of these bowls. Yeah. Right now, we're still going down. So it's still pretty cool. Sunset. Oh, yeah, I No, I just it. So is this how you normally eat? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's interesting when my kids can see that. Youngest boys never come in here, but Right. And he's now um, three and a half. Um, whereas my daughter, she ate meat for the past six or eight months. And then she was vegetarian. And then vegan. Yeah. So I mean, for the kids, well, they just know yet. Like, no, 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 no. When my daughter's at school, like she, she, we've we, we told them all why we eat, why we eat. Yeah. And so they're all yeah. about. Yeah. I think in the future, when they're a bit older, they want to eat something. Well, that's. Uh, yeah, that's completely. Can I get salad for anyone? Um, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I have some Ranch, sort of thing, and um, 
One of them at some stage is going to bring up the pornographic. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, after those kinds. Uh, Inga Roy is telling me the statistic, what is it, 90% of content on the internet is private? 70 something. 70. 75. That blows me away. I've no. got no concept of that. Crazy, huh? But it's driven, like, like, also, you look at technology as well. Mm. Pornography drives technology on the internet because they're just the amount of money. Billions and billions of pounds, don't you think? Mm-hmm. 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 Video, video streaming, mm-hmm. online streaming, yeah. and all of that. That happened, happened years ago. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Pretty much all of the technology that's on the net began from only two sources. One was from the university source. Mm-hmm. So when the internet began in 1986 or something, it was going in or something. It was all just technical, mm. and it wasn't until 1993 that they started to be able to use it for 
storage of photos and other things like that. And then once that took off, then it was the porn industry that wanted to stream it you know, and pay per minute and all those kind of things. And most of the technologies have been developed since they've been developed for the porn industry yeah. to do what they're doing, and then the other people have taken it up. Yes. <coughs> That's as bad though as the anonymity, to be frank. What? Yeah, an anonymity, the hiding behind the cloak of secrecy in order to state what your view is. It's sort of like hiding behind, I, I find hiding behind anonymity is one of the, I think it's one of the worst power issues of power that we have on the planet. Not being willing to stand up for what you're saying. Mm. It's a great avenue too, isn't it? Yeah. The mm -hmm. behind your keyboard. Mm. Mm. And an IP address. And mm. Did you bring Thomas uh, a copy of your yeah. documentary? Yeah. So I'd love to see that. Yeah. Yeah. Is it like something that we could borrow while we're here, like a disc or something? Or? You, you can have it, this one. Yes. Probably. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Jesse to be for that. So. Mm. <laughs> and, and that's correct. I go with the um, sunflower seeds. This wasn't um, people who think a vegan meal um, was going to taste like. It was pretty awesome. <laughs> 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 so would you? Have you got a cookbook? Have you got a cookbook? We've been asked to do a cook show, a cookbook. For YouTube, yeah. Oh, really? Pete's mum has done some stuff for YouTube. Oh, you've got a cookbook? Mmm. Mmm. I can't that much. Actually, it's a cookbook. When I said a cookbook, it's actually my life story. Because when I moved out of home with all these crappy things like Vegemite, it's longer than spaghetti or something, it's something gross. Vegemite and spaghetti? Yeah. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> you ever taste it? It's like Marmite, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, 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 we won't be offended if you spit down and eat grandma. I'm going to eat the rest of it. What's it going to be put on? I'll use it as a rice cake or something like that. Flavour though. So you get a full flavour. This is nothing like marmite. No. Really? Yeah. It's salty and black and spread. Right, that's yeah, but it. Marmite's got that sweet kind of... Yeah, marmite's so sweet. Yeah. Sweet, mm. yeah, yeah. Don't have a short and beef stock just to use that. Pretty much the same thing. That's all you can use when we're out of it. <laughs> no, you got to do it once. Okay. It's one of those things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, not like sign a film. I will take the camera from you. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I've tried it. <laughs> What's the deal? Why, why, why is it so bright? It's the only original thing we've got. <laughs> <laughs> Everything yeah. else came from England or some <laughs> the Americans are in there. Yeah, I went to the States, so they, you can buy Vegemite in the States. Mm -hmm. But they've added all these chemicals into the Vegemite. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you taste it, you go, oh, that's shocking. It's terrible. Mm -hmm. What's going on? Your that? friends did a blind test with And my friends didn't believe me, so what they did is they blindfolded me. <laughs> yeah. I got my Vegemite that I took with me, <laughs> and the other two samples were their Vegemite. Mm. And they, and I said, look, you know, I don't even need to taste it. I can tell you what it's like from smell. Yeah, that's not mine. That's my, yeah, that's mine. That's mine. And and then they got me to taste it, and all of my tests were true. All of them. <laughs> so what had happened was they added these chemicals to the Vegemite. And it changed the whole pressure mm. now. It had to be just cost cutting because it already has a long shelf life. Americans like that though with a lot of things. They add a lot of preservatives and mm. sugar. Because they added a bit of sugar to it as well. Mm. So I once picked up a can of uh, tomato soup over there, mm -hmm. and it had more sugar in it than it had tomatoes. Mm -hmm. oh. Wow. Yeah, so that's like, it's it's like, age bar, yeah. that's like what you were telling me when you were in America. Because um, I haven't been to America, but you can't get good bread over there, because the bread over there is full well, of sugar. Yeah, you can actually. Oh, okay. In some places. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a fun thing. But you've got to know the places. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the worst place for bread that I've ever been to is Greece. Mm. Why yeah, is that? It was bad, eh? I don't right. know. It was mm. really bad. Right? You liked it? You reckon? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you you remember? went back to you go on bakeries. Bakeries until you found one that was any good. Did you find mm -hmm. one that was any good? Yeah, it's like a Toys R Us. And you walk into his house. Multiple bread. Miles of bread. From the roof, from the ceiling to the floor, shelves of different breads, and the room, half of this. Room, they're just entirely surrounded by bread. They made a food group. They made a food group. Well, we didn't try yeah. you know, the whole lot, but the well, we've tried a lot. lot. We yeah. like it. To, we like over a tenth substance. Mm. You know, not this. Yeah. No fiber thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you like the same thing. Yeah. So. The the um 
Too much yeast or something. It yes, just like makes it almost weightless. Mm. Mm. Actually, Greece was one of the hardest places to be a vegan. vegan. It was very hot. Yeah. Oh, we had the bread. <laughs> <laughs> it's not very nice. Did you try to get a homeless? Um, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll ask the whole soup. Yeah, yeah. Home, yeah. Home, no, it's a Mediterranean. Where are you from? Are you... What's the country? Oh. Um, Turkey. North. Turkey? Turkey? No, no, we're... Katerina South. Oh, oh. Are you Albanian? Albanian. 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 Whatever you want to call it. Albanian. 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 Albanian.
I love that you want to draw a book so yes. it's, it's, it's not. <laughs> Did you feel safe uh, drawing Drive yourself? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's why. <laughs> it was the scariest experience I've had being in the bus and even in the ice. It's like, yeah. he's gonna smash everybody! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 This is going they must have a lot of pedestrian accidents. Oh, I don't know. I didn't see one accident the whole time. Yeah, they get oh, rid of them pretty quick. And, and they've got this, <laughs> they have this, sort of, they have this unique sort of spatial awareness when they're on the road. It's yeah. just pretty awesome to see them like they know. Because they're all going this way. They know there's cars coming, the bikes coming. I used to always call it organised chaos. It's the only place where the chaos is organised. Like you've got three lanes of traffic and they turn them into nine lanes. Mm -hmm. Yet. Somehow, it all, works. It, all works. it all works. It's like when I lived in Lebanon, it's pretty insane there. Like there, because in the Civil War, you couldn't slow down at the lights because a sniper would get you. So <laughs> nobody just like... <laughs> <laughs> just like <clears throat> wow. And wow. Um, one of the guys who was an expat who was working for an NGO there, I'm like, how do you drive here? It's insane. I can't figure it out. Nobody has any rules. He's like... Downhill skiing, Mary. You, that's what it is. You just look at what's in front of you, and you go. Everyone else is just doing the same, and you just take <laughs> that doing focus. The same with you. Yeah, we'll all we'll be okay. I was like, okay. <laughs> no rules. No rules. Barbados was funny too. Barbados. Oh, Barbados. Yeah. Yeah. It's Not quite. Anyway. It's a uh, based on the. British system, right? You meant to go turn around the stoplight, stop. They don't do that. They turn up the stoplight and they go about three metres to normal stop. And then they go edge, 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 all the traffic on the other end and they had to go stop. Yeah. And then they go in. And everybody puts up with it. So, so it's just edge, 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 edge. So they've gone straight in. They've gone straight in and they're still moving forward. Yeah, they're just edge. Yeah. In Sierra Leone, um, I, I flew in Sierra Leone. Um, You've been to Ghana in Sierra Leone? Yeah. Where is that? In Africa. 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 We are western coast of Africa. And, um, I had been to Africa before and I uh, was expecting a man with a board to you know, be my guide. Um, and what happened is you basically you get off the plane, your bags are dumped somewhere. Somewhere. Somewhere in the airport, you just got to find them. And then when you, I saw this man, uh, my name on it. Yeah. It had my name on it. It had my name on it. And um, this is start. This is start. So it is coming when we were traveling through the capital city, Accra. And I was on, but we were sort of going down these back roads, and I knew that we had about a two-hour drive um, to the southern part. And uh, did you get your bags? I got my bags. He was picking up all his friends on the way. <laughs> <laughs> I was sitting there. Oh goodness. So anyway. So the overtaking procedure was you overtake a vehicle, so you go to so the, the, uh, the driver the right hand, you go in the left hand lane, you turn your lights off, and you use the lights of the vehicle that you're overtaking. What? Which is, <laughs> which is utterly, utterly uh, terrifying. So it was night time? It was night time. And so he, he, he was to, so, he, so, he, so he's driving, he's got his lights on, so he drives up behind the vehicle he wants to overtake, he overtakes, turns his lights off, so we're now travelling in the dark, on, until, the, opposite side on the, the opposite side of the road, until we've actually overtaken <laughs> so we pull out, pull what? back in, and then turns back on his lights. What is that? What are they doing? Well, how is that good? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Okay. I have no... I asked why he did it, and it's just what everybody does. Right. Mm. But I can't see... I, I, I don't understand this car coming the other direction. Well, exactly. <laughs> I don't understand that there's no logic. No, there was no logic. There was no logic. Because he can't... You know what it's for? It's quite obvious. <laughs> so that the car coming the opposite direction, when he has it head on, he's not in a panic. <laughs> <laughs> he's not in a panic. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's a pretty poor one. Double that, because if you're going back that, I'm going to try to stay in the bag. Yeah, that, that would have been a terrifying. Mm. Because you're, you're relying on somebody else's lights still staying on when you're overtaking. Okay. What if they decide they're overtaking? <laughs> <laughs> well, they can't see that you're overtaking. You're this object to put the side of them that would That's not dark. Yeah. yeah. Maybe just short his indicator and you turn them off. Like a cop, you want to turn the radio on the windscreen. <laughs> 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 Sweet 
Yeah. Well, and releasing it as well. Yeah. 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 So I yeah. thought that was awesome. Yeah. yeah. And he was pretty open too with the other guys, you know. Yeah. Like, because, you know, when you've got five people who... And you're being know, surrounded by five angry women. Mm -hmm. Well... Or, or mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's right. And so I felt like he was pretty good. And he opened up a little bit because a lot of the... Well, because we've had this... Well, me and Mel have different experiences and approaches with our anger. Mm -hmm. And so he felt like, oh, I get all my anger out, you know. I, and, and, and so that had been his practice. And yeah. we thought, well, it's healthy for you. You know, <laughs> and then but the repercussions of that, of course. Yeah. 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 So yeah. what what happened that caused him to have to go to court? Maybe <laughs> he had an incident with his girlfriend oh, okay. where he was biased with her, biased with him, and so yeah. so he didn't go into that a lot, but just a little yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah. But, um, that's wonderful. Though, yeah. yeah. So so how was the experience from your perspective? Though you obviously attracted quite a number of women who yeah. That was pretty full on because he probably didn't want to hear anything and say <clears throat> Well, so the first day I was pretty psyched. Right. And so, and, and, and so I was pretty ready for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and, and, and I was pretty ready to, to address anything that which wasn't okay. okay yeah. So I was pretty happy with that. But then at night I went back and of course, my law of attraction with these, it shut down women really. Yeah. That much, and, and we were pretty open with them during the day about directing them of where their blocks are or what's happening, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And some of that didn't go down great, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but mostly it, it was going okay. Yeah. But that night I had a dream about my mother, wow. and it was like, and the next day I thought, oh gee, you know. And I hadn't sort of gone through into that process enough to really connect with. The emotion you felt during the yeah, yeah. And, and then I was just a bit over, yeah. and I over these over my mother, <laughs> <laughs> and so to go back next day and front up again, I was a little bit reluctant, you know. Was, yeah. you know I just felt. Well, I thought you were reluctant, but I felt you were also a bit despondent because a lot of people we were talking with knew what we were teaching, mm. and then for you to address something, and then have that. Um, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Well, well, it was that exactly to to be honest with someone and then it be refused, you know, or to 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 address it and then address it and then address it. Did you see you it know? as um, your soul attracting those particular types of women, though? Did you see yeah. it like that? Yeah. Well, not until after, not until really. After. Sort of on the, the that first night, I did not in the day. Yeah. But then. In that night, you know, I felt like, yeah, wow, this is happening. Yeah. And then, and then during the, the second day, so, so it wasn't until, you know, after the workshop that we really sat down and nutted mm -hmm. it all out and, yeah. and I felt into that more. Yeah, that's um, great. The second day, I was a little bit more aware of, oh, actually, this is about me addressing it, like More actually fear using my voice. Yeah. 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 And it wasn't necessarily um, really scary scary women yeah. it was women who were just weren't there and and Not what was hear, yeah. yeah and then um so I, I i realized that and i addressed a couple of things and then and i also realized something that i was aware of and didn't address and obviously there was some fear going on because i was just thinking okay this needs to move on and i was <laughs> waiting for that moment and then paul addressed it mm -hmm. and that's when we got feedback the next day um, which I sort of ended up addressing because yeah, boy, because, denial, because yeah. it was it's something that I recognised in myself yeah. that I was in denial of my fear yeah. and putting my experience with other men in my past onto Paul, Paul. Yeah. like so, wanting Paul to handle the women. Yeah, is that what doing? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's well, that's what I recognised. Um, Oh, with this, uh, this other person, it's like she didn't want to go to her fears. What Paul mm -hmm. was addressing, there might be addiction going on here. Yeah. She was wanting to say that. Um, we didn't create a safe space. Paul could have handled it differently. So it was all your fault. Then, well, Paul's. Yeah. It was all Paul's all fault. Because yeah, yeah. um, it was me who addressed her. Right. Yeah. 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 Whereas I recognised what was going on, yeah. but I didn't address it. And then Isn't it funny in, in, in a lot of type of therapy situations how 
the person who's going along to the person trying to assist them blames the person trying to assist them mm -hmm. for not creating a safe space that the person themselves have actually contributed towards. Mm -hmm. It's like you're all... And, and it's interesting about that because I felt like that was something we were aware of. We created a space downstairs, three separate spaces, where people could go and sort of either connect or attempt to feel. And we also said that this may not be for everyone. You feel free to leave at any time. Mm -hmm. And when I addressed that with her in the email, she said it was too cold to go downstairs. Oh, and oh, I thought, so oh well. well so I, in other words, she just wanted to share her stuff with somebody else. Yeah, and be dissatisfied with the guy. Yeah, yeah. and give yeah. us feedback if we were ever to do something else with the. Public. And did you do it like for free, or did you have a chat? Donation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you got criticised even though you did it for free. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's got to be hard though, anger workshop, you know, no one wants to know about anger. Really. That's true, yeah. It's true, there's a lot, we've got a lot of shame. When we gave it. the anger as your guide talk, um, up until then we were having around 120, 130 people regularly come along to in Brisbane where we gave the talk, and when we announced we were going to give an anger as your guide talk, we had 65 people come. Mm. 65, and it's the only time I've ever looked at the clock during AJ talking. Do you know what I mean? Like, whoa, is this going to be over soon? Because it was, heavy, it was yes. heavy. Everyone yeah. was like, nobody wants just like, to I'm not angry. Anger. I don't yeah. want to feel that I've got anger. And in the end, I was sort of, I was almost getting to the point where I thought, oh, I think, I think the best thing to do here is say, look, you know the 65 of you here at the moment. You're all angry, and none of you want to deal with it. <laughs> Go home. <laughs> Leave me alone. I'm glad you finished it. Though. Yeah, <laughs> no, because there's a lot of other people have gotten stuff out. Oh, it's just right. Yeah, yeah, me. Yeah. Yeah, it was full on atmosphere in the inside. You know, whenever you start raising issues of anger, people hear the atmospheres. The two talks that were the hardest to give were the parenting mm. and the anger talk. Mm. Those two talks. First time, like. When um, Eloise and I like we first heard about the divine truth, um, Mum gives us a parenting DVD trying to teach him. You know, like, Do you know oh, how many kids because, you had? Because kids Peter's under three. Mother, <laughs> believe it, like, Peter was letting his kids just go away. Yeah, 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 and they did just a lot again. So anyway, so Eloise and I are like, okay, let's let's, let's put this in and have a go. And first time, oh hmm? so, yeah, okay, have a, It took us nearly twenty goes to actually watch this one DVD. We just. We'd fall asleep, the phone would ring, something had happened, someone would be at the door. Like, it didn't matter what we did, like, it was just so hard. It was like, friendly talk. Yeah, but, yeah. but now, like, I listen to it all the time. It's like, I never had that experience, but just that's how blocked we blocked were hearing yeah. it at the beginning. It's like, man, I always remember that the parenting talk. <laughs> <laughs> so, that, is that the thing that you've gained most of it? I don't think it's the thing I gained most, but it's the most reassuring bit as far as being a father now that I know that if my, something's happening with my kids, that actually I can do something about it. Mm -hmm. Whereas before, I don't know, because I was running the property, I had a huge expectation on Eloisa that the kids were her job. Like She was to look after the kids and make sure that they were all nice and clean and tidy and had their meals when they were meant to, and you know, I went and worked the property. So... I had a huge expectation, as I know always said, that that was her role. Mm -hmm. And to a degree, that's what she wanted, but then when it turned such a basket case, she certainly didn't <laughs> want it. And I was like, yeah, you're still having that role. <laughs> <laughs> this is hard. <laughs> this is hard. <laughs> but I reckon too, though, with yourself, a big issue was that you were just letting the kids run right without any, totally. without any restriction whatsoever. Yeah, right? it was like we were talking about <clears throat> yeah. today, like there was no boundaries, like... <clears throat> Or consequences if the kids behave in a certain way. And when I recommended, firstly, because sometimes the kids would just get out of hand, you know, and totally destroy something or hit people or whatever. And but when I recommended that they just pick them up and hold them mm -hmm. rather than spanking them, and just hold them and then just hold them and hold them and hold them until the child feels the restriction, and then the child starts going into a like a big panic, uh, like a big rage, like a. a because really, right the now we just used yeah, to. The first time you do it, the first time you do it, like the kid goes AWOL, right? And then all the spirits are around you just go, You're such a bad father, yeah, like yeah. whatever. And then the kid just said, holding them, right? And then That's the kid, you. like you have this thought in your head, You're such a bad father. And then your son says, You're such <laughs> a bad father. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have some other thought. You're hurting me. You're going to break my arm. You're like, like, and you're just, just literally you. repeating what you've got going on in your head. It's like, whoa, man, this is... And the kids start repeating back to you what you've got going on in your head. And once you get over all of that, the kid just goes into this crying and you can feel them relax into the crying. And then 
you can let them go, and they'll just let they'll just cry, and then after that they'll be a dream. It's the most beautiful thing. Like you go from having them go AWOL like that to then just going again and trying as as if nothing's happened. Nothing. It's like, hey, I've just been through hell for twenty minutes, and this my son, he's just playing with his train again. You know? I'm like, how does that work? And it took two solid days of that. Yeah. Like, I remember the time we were down there, I just recommended it to you guys, and it took two <coughs> solid days of going back with the kids, and they went from being, like, this destructive... I don't know what you call it. They're like a whirlwind of destruction <laughs> yeah. that would go through terrible, Peter's yeah. house and just yeah. total the whole place. <laughs> right like, say, walls, like, like, like the Tassie Devil. Yeah. 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 Or one of our boys. On, on, their, bed, on <laughs> their bed and pooing on their bed. Yeah. And, all sorts of things. <laughs> <laughs> terrible, yeah. and one of our boys, like, he pretty well refused to wear clothes pretty much too. Like, you know, yeah. It didn't matter whether it was midwinter or summer. <laughs> <laughs> like, he'd wear his undies, but that was about it. And that was a stretch. You know, like. <laughs> and you talk to them and they'd look at you and just grunt or yeah. look at you and go and you sneer at you or whatever you know just they were just so yeah. and then and then after these two days you could talk to them and they'd talk back and they'd ask questions beautiful. it was lovely it just took two days so what's that process how does that process happen? what was happening was with Peter's kids is because uh, the children were living in an environment where there were no where there were no restrictions at all, basically. Free love. Sort of like yeah, this whole concept that a lot of parents had that, you know, you've got to love them and they let, them do, whatever they let want. them do whatever they want and they become monsters by the time they <laughs> as Pete has found out. And uh, and then what happens is because there's no restriction, there's a lot of young children and early adults who have passed into the spirit world who want a life without restriction and who also want to punish their mothers or fathers for what happened to them during their life on earth. And they usually come in also and overcloak the child in that place, and that's when it just becomes devastation. Like, And the child just goes from one devastating act to the next devastating act to the next one. And during the course of every waking hour, basically, they're doing something naughty. And But when you restrict the child, the spirit realises that it can't do anything it wants anymore through the child. And the child also learns that it can't do anything unloving, otherwise it's going to be restricted. So, so now what we do yeah. is we call it ADH or whatever it is and give them drugs. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas, whereas if you just restrict them for a few days consistently, and you need to do it, uh, you then you find that you need to just spread it out. And usually if you do it for a month, over a consistent period of a month, the spirit influence on the child just completely goes away. Because they, they don't have their... The, the spirits can't play anymore. Yeah. Right. So the spirits like can't that. do all of their destructive things through the child anymore because they're not going to get away with it. So they go and find another child somewhere else to try to do a bit. And themselves start developing their own personality. And they also start having a respect for love, a respect for other people, a respect for property, a respect for a number of things. And they know... They're not going to get smacked, but they're just going to get restricted every time whatever they're doing is out of harmony with that. And you, but you found in you, and that's what we talked about, you can't restrict them in anger because it no. doesn't No, it doesn't matter. You have to be yeah. very loving, loving yourself. Yeah, yeah, and that was my wife. Like, there was times where she was pretty well raging too. So like, yeah. And that was where I, earlier I needed to step in and say, look, you yeah. know, I'll, I'll look after them. Yeah. yeah, so if someone's in a better space than the other parent, well, it's... You know, they should step in. That's what I was going to ask. Um, so while you're in this stage, this holding stage, is that um, because sometimes parents' words can be just as damaging. Yeah, no, you so, just uh, remind so them that you no love them. Talking yeah, you remind them. them that you love them. Yeah. But they're not going to get away with this behaviour anymore. Yeah. Every time they do this behaviour that's out of harmony with love and out of harmony with you know caring for others or caring for their environment, you're going to restrict them yeah. every single time. Yeah, it's been a few times too with myself where I'm just bawling my eyes out too because yeah. it's like in those places, it's like you realise actually what we're putting into our yeah. kids. So mm-hmm. yeah, like because this is not theirs. And Peter, you also we realised that it was that laissez-faire <laughs> sort of like you know let them do anything they want yeah. that it created the monster in Absolutely. the first place. Mm-hmm. And so now you're having to deal with the effects of the monster sort yeah. of thing, which is, and then you realise that partly it's because of your actions towards yeah. the child yeah. that's caused you know them to become such uh, unwieldy children. Yeah. And and once they go through this loving sort of restriction, then what happens is after a while they learn that there are restrictions, and the restrictions are all based around whether it's harmonious with love or not. So yeah. so what they learn is that they have an unrestricted life as long as their actions are based around love. 
Yeah. But if if their actions are not based around love and somebody else is going to be harmed through their actions, then they're going to have a restricted life. And so the kids now are quite like there are times now when when you Archie's guys are still a bit erratic. Yeah. When, when you guys Arch. are consistent with that now, yeah. like it's really good because you can sit down and have a chat with them. They mm -hmm. show you things. They're investigating everything. But now they're more taking more care with nature and more care at home and more mm -hmm. care with. Yeah, the house is staying The house is tidy. <laughs> the house is tidy, easier to clean up. Uh, they don't, you know, pour flour all over the beds and all those kind of things anymore. And like all of those, all of that behaviour stops. And then, like, and then there's one day it's like, hey, I'm a medium. And it's like, okay, Angela, who is this little guy here? Yeah. So then I actually start having a chat to some of these little mm. spirits. So yeah. and it's sort of good because you get to know well, actually. Who is? And your one of your sons is a medium, isn't he, Charlie? Yeah, Charlie's. Friend. And and, and he'll, he he will just tell you who it exactly is, who's there and yeah. where he's from. And sometimes he'd even use the excuse, "Oh, you know, such and such made me do that." <laughs> you know, like, yeah. and, and then the guys would say, "That's no good. You just don't listen to friends who tell you to do things that are unloving mm -hmm. all the time." What were you going to so. say, though, Mel? No, I was just interested because I, I just think this is awesome, and I have worked with some children, but. Mm. And for me, um, from just ex observing experiences before, the, before knowing the truth, what I know now, I feel as though that sometimes parents, like you could be holding a child, but if you're going in it's here yeah. like this. Yeah, no, 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 it's, it's not so right. that's yeah. what You don't I, want to be pulling them down. Or yeah, so I, I was just wondering why this is going on, what would you at, say? At, at, the, mom, at yeah. the moment, like for Eloisa, she finds that heaps harder than me, and so the kids will often be crying with me, whereas with Eloisa, they think there's a negotiation, so they think yeah. the kids keep... Keep hacking away, so it's yeah, like, Mum, 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 I need a drink. I'm gonna do a and poo bar. I'm gonna do a poo. <laughs> There's a poo coming out my bum. <laughs> 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 oh, Mum, Mum, yeah. you're hurting me. You're hurting me. Like Mary, she's hardly got any older. <laughs> you're hurting me. You're hurting me. And then she could feel so guilty. Right? She's like, Oh. <laughs> Because that's what I imagine the biggest problem maybe for a mother would be the guilt. It would be just holding that there yeah. and that guilt. Yeah, yeah. and Eloise is so afraid. She doesn't, yeah. she's afraid of like spirits, hey? And she's also afraid of being, being a bad, bad. mum. She's yeah. terrified of the boys yeah. when they have their spirits. Like she's, I said, it, like it's just a little, she's absolutely terrified sometimes. Mm -hmm. And the, the reason why we started it is why well, I suggested it to them because. Every time we, we would sit down and have a chat, yeah. the two boys in particular would come to their mother and scream and yell and cry and they'd be crying and crying no matter what she did. And then, then they'd be right in front of and her And they'd face be screaming and... in her face and yeah. pulling her hair and yeah. crying like as if... And I was going, yeah, this is all just control. It's not, yeah. it's none of it's real. Yeah. It's all just a way of controlling you because you let the control happen, yeah, you know. Your and yeah. and once yeah. their Louisa realises that's what's going on, and she's try and she's doing things differently now, the boys know that they can't get away with control mm. anymore. And they and so last time we were there, we talked for a good solid three hours without the boys coming once yeah. to interrupt the conversation. Mm. Yeah. Whereas before it was like five minutes and now they screaming their heads off and carrying on and fighting each other and punching up each other and yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just full on. Last time we were there it was beautiful, it came out there like, they're cooking! You know, we were doing stuff and they were like, yep, they made a cheesecake yeah. and yeah. 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 So you were saying... And it, it, that's where the exhaustion, because me as a, as a father, mm. like we had one child, so he's our daughter, like... Um, after one year, both Eloise are totally exhausted. Like as a like, you work all day and then you just, you're basically trying to put the fire out. Like it's mm. exhausting yeah. when you're trying to numb the yeah. emotion. So the question I ask the guys uh, is is are you, aren't you guys tired of this? It's like, yeah, yeah. Guys, like, it's a worker. Is this working? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're doing work. And they admit it, Dave. It's not working. You want to try something different, you know? Yeah. And uh, yeah, because you were saying that um, so you have one child that's a medium. Well, one who's more mediumistic than the other two. The other one's um, So Isabel, my daughter, she she's, can see quite a lot too, but she's sort of, um, I think, sort of, it's a bit warped with her where it's a lot clearer and precise with Charlie. Mm. So um, is that, because I remember you were saying that you, as a child you were quite frightened of that, so is there anything you can do to kind of help Yeah, you? absolutely. Like, we start talking about it now, so like, mm. and... Um, so like we'll be in bed and Eloise will get a sketch pad out and Charlie will, like, and I'll tell Eloise what to start drawing because I'll ask Angela to see well, who the little spirit is. Eloise will start drawing it and then we'll have a conversation with Charlie and say, does it look like that? Like, how's his nose and stuff? And then he'll, 
he'll tell us exactly. And also you have more skills now, don't you, with like you understand the spirit world more than yeah. you did when you were a kid, so you can explain to Charlie. I'm not as terrified as I used to be. Yeah. Mm. And um, mm. my, my biggest fear with the spirit world was all always that I'm going to get totally consumed, like I'm not going to be able to... Like, that won't think, give you any time. Yeah. Yeah. Because as soon as you do wake up as a kid, like, then suddenly it gets very intense. And most people who end up in the schizo ward or whatever, it basically becomes consuming where you... You literally cannot sleep because it's just bombardment. Mm. So is it only his behaviour that that's that's that that's why you knew that he was kind of? No, if some, I don't know. If you watch kids in the park when you get back home, just just go to any park and watch them. Sometimes you can you, see them having see interactions the with spirits, or they're having this conversation where they're just chatting away. But so it's, it's like it's a two-way conversation. But there's only one person there. You see it. We people call it imaginary friends. Yeah, that's what I said to you today. Yeah. Like, how many mothers of you know say that their kids have got this imaginary friend, and they just go down to the you know go out and play, and the parents think this is awesome because they're just in the sandpit playing away. Mm -hmm. So, as a parent, you generally like the imaginary friend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I guess in some instances, that could be okay, right? Yeah. 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 Well, they are friends. Yeah. They, yeah. they are real people. Yeah. So they're yeah. friends. And, yeah. they, and often they really if they're, mis if they're misleading the child and taking the child down, though, down a destructive route, or taking the child and, and bombarding the child with you know, messages of negativity about the child itself and things like that, then obviously there's a problem with the spirit involved and, and there's a problem in terms of the, what the parents are allowing in terms of this spirit could only connect to the child depending on what the parents so are doing. So Charlie will often ask us questions about stuff that he's got no idea about. Mm -hmm. And then when we start talking to him about it, then it's, you know, he's been talking to someone and he's told him about bad things they've done or whatever. Yeah. And then how does that make you feel? Yeah, I, I feel a bit, I get quite tight in there and concerned still. Yeah. yeah. I haven't busted it completely. Yeah. Because yeah. when you were a child, yeah. You used to get hammered by them. Totally, yeah, yeah. And I like I had to basically take all the chairs out of my bedroom for a start. Because if I had a chair in the bedroom, someone would have to sit in it. So <laughs> someone that he saw when he woke up in the morning. Yeah, well no, I knew even when I was going to sleep, so, so I'd be yeah. under the covers, I had to have a light on in the room. Like it's just yeah. Freaked out. And you had no one to tell you anything about it, did you? Not well I told mum but she was terrified too, yeah. so it didn't yeah. really help much. Yeah. 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 And in that process, like, because, like, oh, we'd be out in the paddock with Dad and say, um, Dad, we've got to get home, and, you know, such and such is going to be arriving in five minutes. Dad would give me a strange look and go, okay, well, this has happened before, and so we'd pack up and go home, and sure enough, such and such would be just at the gate. The, the problem is when you start squashing that for long periods of time, you, you lose that connective yeah. bit that I had. So I'm just currently <coughs> now starting to get back, really. Yeah. You're doing kindergarten again. Really. Yeah, back in kindy. Yeah. 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 So is it possible to actually miss parts of your childhood then? Because of... Certainly. Yeah. yeah. And that's why a lot of people have gaps in their memory even. As well. Because they have gaps in their memory when they've sort of stepped away from themselves and allowed spirits to manipulate their own body to do things. And they usually step away from themselves because they are scared or some other reason. And, uh, and for that period of time that they've stepped away, somebody else usually takes it over. It's very similar, you know how we were describing the car, about people who get drunk. Mm. How, mm. you know, they drink, 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 drink until such a point that they can't even remember anymore. And yet they're still drinking and they're still standing up and they're still driving and they're still doing all these other things. And they can't remember doing any of it. And the reality is they probably were so drunk that they're now out of it. And, and somebody else has taken over most of their, f their functions and doing the rest. So they of wake up in bed. It's like they wake up safe in bed at home, not wondering how the hell they got there. And that particular gap of their life, they never remember. Mm. Unless somebody tells them what they did, they, they can't remember what they did. Yeah, it's like someone saying, you were an idiot last night, you did all this, and you walked <laughs> on the fire and all that. And like, no, I do. <laughs> so where do, you, where do you stand on sort of hypnosis and things like that then? Well, I feel any form of hypnosis is a dangerous practice, actually, because it, it, it's a practice that encourages spirit, spirits to overcloak people. And this is why a lot of the so-called uh, regressional therapies that occur, you know, these kind of past life regressional therapies, very dangerous, actually, because what happens is the past life regressional therapist 
has surrounding them hundreds and sometimes even thousands of spirits who want to speak, who want to overcloak somebody on earth and want to have an addiction met with somebody on earth. And when the therapist hypnotizes the person supposedly to take them through a past life, one of these spirits just connects to the person in that moment and starts expressing itself through the person. And then, of course, the therapist generally is taking a photograph or a video of this. And the person's personality changes, even their facial features change, their, all of their personal actions change. And so it's quite obvious that it seems like it's a different person. And then they offer that video as proof to the individual who can't remember the event and that that's the proof that you were a past life of such and such. And really, all that's happening is that the, the past life regressional therapist is is hypnotising people and allowing spirits to overcloak them in that moment and have their way for 10 minutes, half an hour, an hour. And, in, and the long-term problem is that those, because the person on earth who's gone through the therapy then believes that they've had that life, then that spirit often attaches themselves to the person more permanently and follows them around the rest of their life. And it's, so it's actually quite damaging to the person. And, and this is why so-called past life regressional therapies don't actually work and in fact more often than not cause things like you know psychoses and other kinds of in, uh, mental illnesses so I, I feel it's quite dangerous yeah, see i knew from right at the beginning that i could never take drugs or drink alcohol because mm -hmm. if i got drunk or i took drugs i was just going to get totally overtaken so like i think a lot of people who ask like who do see spirits and that know that you know, fairly early in our life, that so if mm. they go down that path, it's, yeah, it's bad. It's not going to be good. Yeah, because we're more open and it's so much easier for a spirit just to come in. Mm. So, yeah, I, I see a lot of uh, so-called New Age practices <coughs> as being quite negative to you, the expression of your own will. It's sort of almost like you decide, you going along to get some therapy, to get some help on a certain subject only to find now that not only have you got your own problems, but now you've got the problems of the spirit who's now <laughs> connected with you to deal with as well. And often you can come out of it in far worse condition than you entered it. And in fact, many of the people who have gone through past life regressions finish up believing that they've been, you know, uh, abused or believing that they've had 25 different past lives and in this life they were tortured, that life they were abused, in this life they were this and that. And they, and they believe all of these things a lot of times to just avoid their own life mm. and so it's not about taking responsibility for one's own life it's about getting out of responsibility for one's life and in fact for a lot of people it's about finding a reason why they should be able to get away with doing certain things in their current life so it's not about taking responsibility at all so and i've, I've known like i've talked to some past life regressional therapists about these issues and they get very angry about it, very angry and almost all of them know that what I'm saying actually is what's happening and if they don't know it they usually don't get as angry. It's the ones that do know it who get really angry. They know that there's these spirits surrounding them, they know that these spirits overcloak the individual. They believe the spirits are helping the individual but often that's not the case at all. And it just depends on how nice the spirit is as to how bad the experience is. If the spirit's nice, then the experience might not be as bad. But if the spirit's not very nice, it can be a pretty bad experience. It's a bit like a schizophrenia, a person with schizophrenia having some very negative spirits overcloaking him during these episodes uh, and, and telling him to kill himself and harm himself and do all these other things or hurt other people. There's many spirits in the spirit world that want to do that. And... Um, and it's very, very damaging to the individual on Earth, you know? Yeah. So is that because there are some instances where a schizophrenic person can actually, depending on the, the person, they can change eye colour as well, can't they? That's correct, yes. Yeah. Yeah. They, so that, yeah. There's all sorts of... Depending on the strength of the connection between the person on Earth and the spirit, the spirit can even manipulate physical characteristics in the person. You'll often see their face almost change and... Like there's one fellow who's at our audience who comes to our audience, I won't say who it is, but when he gets overclothed by the spirit who's with him, his face gets all fatter. Yeah. And there's other there's people who come that we notice sometimes when they get overclothed by the spirit, sometimes it's the opposite gender. And they turn, like if they're a woman, their face turns into a masculine 
face, face and it, they look like a man while all that spirit's with them and then and then when the spirit disappears they sort of get more feminine again it's just really weird yeah, and in the eyes too and the your eyes <coughs> as well mm. and um, this spirit there yesterday I was trying to photograph him right and I thought because you can really see the extremities with this guy every time I got the camera ready to take a photograph of this spirit he'd, he'd, he'd go away he'd go away like he was on he knew straight away what I was trying to do mm. yeah and because people can see them, because you wanted to get the difference. Yeah, I wanted to be able to do yeah. a difference and so put them side by side. He wanted to show people, the, the person a picture of this is what you look like when you're you, you and yeah. this is what you look like when you have the spirit with you. Because it's really quite it's noticeable. Quite, it's yeah. quite noticeable. So every time I went to take a photo of the spirit, I couldn't get it. I'm like, man, he's good. <laughs> <laughs> so does everybody have the capability of sort of. Um, Hearing spirits and seeing spirits. Or Everyone has that. We're, we're all we're all under the same law. So you know the way God makes all of God's laws is that they're all they all apply equally to every individual, no matter who we are. But the law requires a certain amount of openness to in your belief systems before it can work. So, so for example, if you don't believe in spirits at all, and you are not open to even considering it, then you will be very influenced generally by spirits, but you won't know who's influencing you. And whereas once you start to open up emotionally to the feelings associated and be able to determine the difference between your own feelings and somebody else's feelings, then you often become very easily aware of who, what spirits are there and what they're doing. And so it's like, it's just a matter of developing the awareness. But the law, which is a law that governs all communication, and is always present and applies equally to each individual. It just determines how we engage the law and how much of it we understand. It's sort of like any other law, like you know, with mankind, with the law of gravity and the law of aerodynamics. It, it was only when we could engage the law of aerodynamics and we understood it that we could have control of flight. And it's very similar with regard to the laws involving spirit communication. Once you start to understand the laws, then you know how to have a decent communication without being harmful, if that makes sense. <laughs> Whereas people who like who have schizophrenia or people who have um, a lot of manic depression, the bipolar types of depression, uh, they often are aware that they're speaking with somebody else, but, uh, but they don't understand all of the principles of the law, so they don't know how to control them. So, they don't, so quite often it becomes uncontrolled and damaging to their life. Yeah. So does that does you do you have facial features that change, Pete? When you have uh... yeah, but that's fab or radio or something when I'm yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. I was telling you before that sometimes <laughs> Pete's really open, and it's all spirit who I'm talking to. Pete just is just behind. It's quite good to. And I like I, once when that lady who wanted to murder me came <laughs> to you, like your whole. Pete, Pete, you know how he's quite mild mannered. He speaks quite rapidly, but he's quite mild mannered, and he's and he's quite gentle and everything. He got like this, and uh, it's in my face, and how much you, you know, he's really telling me how much you wanted to kill me and whatever else. With his eyes closed. <laughs> his eyes closed. <laughs> <laughs> he's there channeling this woman, you know. And I think that recording's on AJ's. Yeah, I think I got some audios of it actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're amazing. And I was well the sick audios. for about a day and a half after that one. Pun in? I was violently yeah. sick after that one. Yeah. Just with the fear. Like I had like a delayed reaction where Because you were pretty afraid. Of terrified. Her. So She like, was a person who had murdered something like you know, seven or eight hundred men during the course of her spirit life by making those men go crazy. So, so you she, can murder people in and kill themselves, yeah. yeah. Generally So uh, what she did was she 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 would find a man who was like uh, her what happened when she was 14 years of age? This happened like 1,700 years ago. She was, four, she was 14 years of age. Her uncle got custody of her and he raped her and raped her and raped her until she died. Right? And when she passed, she passed with so much rage that she decided that she'd find every man like her uncle on earth and destroy him, psychologically destroy him. And the way she psychologically destroyed him, she... She'd try to get a connection with them and try to develop a connection over time, and then she'd try to influence every single thought they had. Right? 
And because many of them are open to that, because of their feelings with women and so forth, she would influence every single thought they had until they finished up killing themselves. And then she'd find another man and do the same thing. And that's what she, all she'd been doing for 1,700 years after she passed. They can also manipulate another spirit to kill someone, another person yeah, to yeah, kill someone. Yeah, she was doing it. So most suicides, generally there's a spirit involved. Like, I think there was a case in Sydney, I can't quite remember the exact um, facts of it, but basically someone had jumped off the cliff and then they're realising what they've done and there's the claw marks and the fingernails and the side of the cliff that they realise that oh, we're jumping now. Mm. And um, that's quite a common occurrence. That was another person who came to one of our seminars mm. in Gosford who said that. That mm. lady, remember? Mm. And about her, um, her um, 17 year old so, well, nephew, I think. I've had, we, I've had a spirit come to me, like if you take, say, Japanese culture, for instance, there's like 17,000 suicides a year. And there's specific spirits that are actually like causing a lot of these suicides, and we've talked to a couple of those guys. 